Welcome back to Saga Three Kings. This is session number 4D, uh, The Long Walk. Um, last session, the group um, had some fun in the city of Bonrock, a uh, dwarvish city up north of Purpleite. Um, they um, pawned off the responsibility of um, Roderick, ultimately, on not only um, the uh, warrior uh, woman and two knights, that had uh, initially uh, set to basically be their guard or his guard, uh, but also upon the two uh, angelic maidens, um, and they got along pretty well and uh, narrowly escaped, or um, I guess eluded, um, expertly distracted, <laughs> expertly distracted, and then escaped um, from the apparent um, uh, machinations of Calareth who appears to be um, in the garb and guise of the um, Hierophant of Osiria, one of the servants of the overarching high priest of the Great Church, which was the unifying factor for the um, Three Kingdoms um, at the end of the Civil War. So he's a representative of the, um, effectively, the connective tissue that uh, holds the triumvirate together again. Um, that said, um, after some time, some downtime in Bonrock with uh, purchases and repairs, um, ultimately um, Raya had decided to uh, gift or trade um, the Saint Sword, um, which was recovered um, just outside of the uh, Dwarven Pass uh, to the Dwarves of Bonrock. Uh, they granted him a decent amount of coin and treasure in response. Um, and uh, the group has basically mustered together with no real baggage to speak of um, that I am aware of, other than the desire to find Calareth and stop him, um, or to find the white dragon and beat the shit out of it. Um, <laughs> I believe those are the two primary goals um oh also uh the real primary goal um <laughs> Brooklyn, uh wants to lead the group up mount rubii to the west uh to investigate a shrine there and um hopefully um gain the assistance of a very powerful religious ally um Hazil, the phoenix um They've already decided on their path. Instead of maneuvering in the shadow of the mountains, they are going to take the road uh, past Purpleite and onwards um, to Barod, investigate the nature of what happened there based on the reports from the uh, sellsword named Donovan um, that they got uh, some days ago. Um, more than a six day, actually. It's been quite a while traveling. Now, two six, it's two six day even, um, since you were in Purpleite to start this whole dance around um i think my music stopped let me double check that no it's still going um yeah um so to the point uh they travel for the um better part of the morning on the day that they choose to leave um and uh yeah they realize that the temperatures have um become a bit colder out and about um on the uh ice fang mountains um as they're traveling down the mountain, they do see a bit of a snow drift off the way, um, and it looks like someone has trudged through the snow relatively recently off the road, and uh, based on your perception, it does look like there is a small alcove not too far from the road uh, that one might have tried to gain shelter in. Um, as you're continuing down the road, do you wish to go investigate the alcove and who might have trudged over that direction? Uh, the reports from the guards as you were exiting Bonra say that there was a pretty heavy snow uh, two days ago uh, that you were unaware of because you were in the warm uh, hearth of Bonra. Um, but yeah, do you wish to go and investigate that or continue on down the mountain? It's just another, another traveler. Why would we need to investigate? I should say this in the character somehow. Hey, there looks like someone went that way, but... It's probably just another traveler, so we could probably just continue on down the mountain. What say ye? That didn't sound like Benson at all. 
Well then, uh, <laughs> there he is. I, I, um, yeah, uh, uh, it looks like somebody went that way. You guys want to go check it out and see why he went that way? How far? How far off of our, you know, path does it look like it's leading? Um, I would say probably about seventy or so feet. It's it's worth a stop. You just take a couple we minutes can. to look. Yeah, we could throw into all the trouble rolling the dice. We should use them. Mm. <laughs> was no trouble. I'm, I'm down for every random encounter. What I didn't know, because I was sitting there thinking I was going to have to hit the five one over and over and over again. You can hit advanced dice roll and roll like a set number, how many ever you need, which is cool. I rolled them all at once. <laughs> so you are going over to chat? Yes. Okay. Um, you trudge through the snow. Um, it does look like there was um, at least two individuals who had made their way up that way. Um, and uh, just based on your understanding of footballs, it doesn't look any like anyone came back. So two people went towards this alcove, but didn't come back this way. Um, as you make your way there, you can see up ahead what appears to be um, two individuals kind of covered with snow. Um, the look of a dwarf's face kind of peering out through ice and snow. Um, with kind of a teeth gritted, kind of completely like blue over, um, like uh, blue all over kind of skin tone. Um, and he seems to be kind of clutching uh, two things in his hands. And he's kind of frozen in place there. The other thing that is present with him, the other um, traveler, uh, appears to also be frozen, stiff and not moving, but it appears to be nothing more than a suit of armor. Not too dissimilar from the juggernauts that were parading around um, Bonrock but frozen and kind of held there in position. Are you the only one that walked over that way? I don't think uh, I was. We all... I was definitely yeah. going. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we go. Benson, go ahead and make an Arcana check. Did it do it? There it goes. Killed it. What'd you get? 26. Okay. So um, what you're noticing here is this kind of rhyme pattern and the ice on them doesn't appear to be natural or like they've been sitting here for a long time and they've just frozen over. You estimate that a very severe blast of cold was slammed upon these two individuals in this spot. And as you're kind of looking around for signs of uh, that, you can see that um, there's like drift on the snow right around there, like something very forceful um, from above was pushing down on the snow and causing it to cause drifts outwards and away from this site. So a if, dragon came down with its wings buffeting the snow and breathed on it. With a twenty six, you know yeah, exactly we, what yeah. I'm saying. Every Chody had a look on his face like, wait <laughs> no, what does he mean? <laughs> I would I would say that to like kinda of be like, Alright, don't flip out but it seems that let Chambles know that it seems like a dragon, a white one, came down and froze these guys solid. Um, with that, would I, would there be any way to save them? Like if they've been dead for iron, they've been dead for two magic? Or, they've been dead for two days. Okay, cool. Then I'll, I'll tell them there's no use saving them. No way to save them. Do you investigate the bodies? Oh yeah. The, uh, okay, I'll let him. He was uh, he was going first. I was more cautious. Sorry. So Brooklyn, as you kind of investigate the two corpses, you'll note that uh, the dwarf appears to be kind of dressed in winter garb, um, and he appears to be kind of a merchant, not too dissimilar from some of the folks you saw walking around Bonrock. And he has his hands close to his chest, and he appears to be gripping a bag in one hand and a parchment in the other. I'll try to take him out of his hands. His fingers kind of brittly break. As you pull them away, the blood inside uh, completely frozen in the digits as you kind of discard them and kind of... Uh, um, you pull the bag away and you can kind of hear a jingle within the bag and the bag starts to kind of break under the weight of it. Um, you kind of put your hand underneath to catch it and as you kind of peel the top of the bag away, you realize that there are ten beautifully cut, princess cut, um, pink gemstones um, and you kind of hold those in your hand they shine in the morning light, um, and they're just like kind of a very vibrant kind of pastel pink color. Um, and yeah, the other hand's holding the parchment kind of tightly to his hand as well. But you kind of look at them and aren't sure what they're worth. 
um, someone a bit more um, keen on the worth of stones, um, your uh, Benson or your Raya um, might know. We're, we're both standing right there. Yeah, but I'll just yeah. turn around and show them. Um, so the two of you would notice that they are a stone known as a Morganite. Um, they're pretty um, rare, um, and they typically kind of come out of um, the capital city. Um, this person might have acquired them there. Um, based on the wreckage of the bag, you assume they were purchased from a gem cutter. Um, and uh, you're assuming that each one of those is probably worth about 100 gold pieces. And based on the nature of the cuts, you assume that they were intending to probably put it in some piece of jewelry or something. I'm going to take a look at the parchment and see if we can get the coat off of him, if it's eligible. Okay. Um, go ahead and make a, a sleight of hand check if you're trying to remove the parchment without breaking the parchment. Because remember, it is frozen over. Is the parchment itself frozen? All of it. Everything. Every part of this person is completely frozen locked. Blasted with ice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Benson, you want to see? I'll try to help. If Benson can do something about thawing some of the ice first. Uh, Precipitation. Try to warm it up a little bit. Okay. With that, I'll give advantage in the sleight of hand check. All right, twenty-three. You peel the parchment. Only a couple of small fragments from the back kind of peel off. Like you know when you're kind of. Like pulling a, a, the top of a sandwich off of some cheese. And there's like little pieces that remain. Similar kind of thing. But the, the document seems to be in order. Um, it says um, a name um, in Dwarvish. Um, and then the script is in Dwarvish as well. I can read it. And then it's signed in Dwarvish. So you would be able to tell that it's um, daughter and then a name. Uh, which I'll, I'll pull from my random list here in a second. Um, I have brought you the greatest gift I can for your wedding party. I hope that these suffice, and they will shine as purely as your face will to your husband. Signed, Dwarf's name, who is currently unimportant, because he's dead. I'm going to check out that other thing, the other guy as well, the suit of armor. He is a juggernaut um, chassis um, undaunted. He weighs I'm about... Look at, lying around. I was going to look at Shambles and be like, hey, there's another body. He weighs about 500 pounds. Neither of the names have it carry any weight to them? No, they're not important to you. You're pretty sure that if you go into town and ask around in the merchant quarter, you'd probably be able to find the, the daughter. But um, that would be... Um, you've already traveled about three hours, so it'd be three hours back and then three hours to where you're at. I could just dash there if you guys want. Wait here. Yeah, I'd kind of actually be okay with going back and getting these to the daughter. Okay. Sitting on everybody else. And if we can get the coat off of him, get it on Benson. Okay. Um, yeah, the coat's easy enough. Um, with the warming pressure digitation, he's able to basically clear the, the rime from it. Um, it's a heavy winter cloak. Um, so put that on your character sheet. And it's pretty nice. Uh, it looks like it's made out of... Um, uh, polar bear pelt. Um, Fancy. Looks like it has got gilded cords for the tie, the drawstrings, um, and the hood appears to. It doesn't seem to have kept the bear's face, but you can kind of tell that the bear's head has been utilized as the the hood. You get just the ears. Yeah, it's got the ears. It's like a it's like a kigu. Peasant, what's your fashion? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Um, no style of I don't know how. Let's see. Ba, 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 ba. All right. Um, bear with me here. Um, sorry. Um, so yeah, you are going back. Do you want to just send, uh, cause, cause Shambles could probably get there in an hour and back in an hour. If you want to wait here for a couple of hours, that works. I'm okay. Well, I'm willing to do that. The white dragon shows up and he misses the fight. Oh, oh, oh man. We need him. Is that what you want to do? Or do you want to keep it and just maybe the next time you're back in Bon Rock, pass it along? We don't I don't know, know that we're coming back. back. I'd be willing to run there. Okay. If that's the case, if we're doing the run plan. 
Um, Shambles, go ahead and make a d20 roll and pick a representative for the other four and give me a d20 roll for that. Uh, Jeremy. Six. Roll a d100, Zach. Thirteen. One second. Okay. What, what, before, well, sorry, no, go ahead. You're not keeping up with uh, shambles. It's not a thing that's going to be done. If he's sprinting home, he's sprinting. No, I was going to say, what time of day is it? It's mid-morning. Okay, it's so expensive. it's early. All right, never mind, then. I would... He'll be back before lunch. Yeah, right, yeah. Hang out, make, maybe... Have an early warm lunch. for a few minutes. <laughs> make a fire. Make he a says, snow dragon. Igloo. We do those things oh, that people with flesh have, have to do. For, uh, Shambles to switch into this juggernaut body, or is that not happening? And are we just leaving it here for later? We might just stash it for later. That, that seems like a. Uh, if no, if we feel pretty confident, uh, Benson and I can take that apart while you're running and stow it in my bag. That works. Okay. It weighs 500 on its own. The juggernaut body. What's the limit on a bag of holding? Uh, 500. 500. Hey! hey! Ooh, nope. I got too much coinage, so that's oh. not gonna work. Um. But yeah, as you're kind of maneuvering um, up and about that way... Um, I'm going to leave my bag of holding with them and let them continue that plan, if that's possible. Perfectly Mine's fine. Mine's empty. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> Perfectly fine. You dart up that way, and um, as you're heading up that way, um, you um, make it into uh, Von Rock. Um, you kind of do a very quick uh, search in the Merchant Quarter. Um, mentioning the name of the individual. I'm assuming they gave you the parchment um, as kind of a document. They, yeah, I've taken that. They direct you back to um, the um, um, the lady's estate, and as you are being led in, um, the dwarfs that are kind of leading you in are kind of, you know, confused. You're walking, talking, undaunted. They're used to having more of an automaton kind of variant. Um, but they lead you in to speak to the lady, um, we can go through the courtesies if you'd like, or you can just basically be like, here you go, and then bye. Is that the mentality, or do you want to roll play? I'd, I'd be, you know, kind and let her know your father was killed. <laughs> she looks at you, and she says, where was the body? I would, I would describe kind of the alcove off the road, explain that he was found dead, it appeared to be a dragon attack, and uh, his body was left with the Undaunted. The there. dragon known as Hornbeck to the dwarves has been seen around Bon Rock. It's good of you to bring this to my attention um, and to our, our attention. Um, did you mention it to the merchants who sent you here? No, ma'am. I came straight to you. I'll make sure that they are aware. This is dire news to be sure, and the roads should probably be closed for some time. Um, I don't really have much to give you in the way of a reward. Um, None is really needed. Uh, I'm a, unfortunately, we don't have the means to uh, give a proper funeral service, but we will gladly try to leave some sort of beacon so the body can be recovered, if that's your wish. Of course. Um, that's, we were hoping to send, I, I was going to, to send someone out. Um, and we'll probably postpone the marriage for a time. We were hopeful he'd be back within the month, and based on where you say he was, he was maybe a days out. Or a couple hours out. She kind of sighs and says, any time that you are in Bon Rock, you are welcome within my house. Um, and she says um, she is um, House Rose Stone, is what we'll call them. Well, I do appreciate the offer, good lady. Very good. Um, and yeah, if that's that, you kind of bolt back. I'll leave her with her things, bolt back, try to make sure there's some kind of identifiable cover. Okay. Um, as you're making your way down, um, go ahead and make me a dexterity saving throw. Eleven. Okay. Um, one second. Fall down the mountain, anyway. 
you're rushing down the way, kind of making your way down. There's a bit of snow up ahead, like kind of divots down and kind of comes up, and like the road's kind of a bit covered with snow. But you passed through here before, and it wasn't too much of a trouble. But as you kind of rush down that way and are running across the, or kind of flying across the tops of the uh, the snow, keeping a good distance, um, what'd you get on your second roll? Twenty-five. Yeah, you narrowly miss and kind of fly aside and astride um, as a worm bursts from the snow and kind of jumps towards you. It's not the purple worm. Just let's get that out of the way. Right a there. similar, uh, lesser creature. Are you familiar with a remoraz? No. All right, let me uh, see if I can't find you a picture. I'll post this in the general. Uh. There you go. It's a smallish one, um, probably um, maybe about 14 feet long. You saw two of them tailing after the purple worm when you saw them coming down the mountain the very first time you saw the purple worm. Um, but yeah, it snaps up at you, tries to bite at you. Um, you can see that your armor plating kind of is glowing a little bit. You assume it's being heated, but you can't feel heat. Um, it hasn't touched you. Do you want to continue flying away from it, or do you want to engage it? Yeah, I don't have time for this. I'll I'll take up a little ways up into the sky. And you can see that it, my guys. it kind of moves across the snow and then kind of dips into the snow a bit and seems to be kind of trailing after you for a time, and you're moving really fast, and you can basically see it just kind of turn a different direction and kind of head back to its hunting ground. Good. Um, all right, you make it back to your friends um, pretty safely. And um, they have disassembled and st stowed the um, juggernaut body into half in, half in. Because you had some stuff in your bag of holding too, right? Mine was completely empty. It is completely full of juggernaut body. Nice. <laughs> Just as it should be. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> you continue on, uh, making your way. Um, as you progress to the base of the mountain, just north of Purple Light, um, you can see um, outside of the city of Purple Light, um, kind of um, off the road that you're on and on the road that also leads up into the mountains to an unknown kind of location, but you know that there was a road there that wasn't um, one of the roads that you've already been on. You've been on the one that comes from the dwarves. You've been on the one that um, goes to Bon Rock, but this one is the one that kind of leads into the mountains. Like it might head towards Ice Bank Hold. Um, but over that way, you can see about 15 individuals kind of camped. Um, you can see that they have pikes um, outside of their camp that have bodies lanced on them. And the bodies have red scarves kind of hanging from their necks. And you no. can also see that some of them look like, instead of having red scarves, looks like they pulled the intestines, bloody intestines, out and wrapped them around the necks of these people to hang off of their necks. How many were there? Uh, there's about 15 individuals with a bunch of dead crimson scarves kind of hanging on um, impaled pikes. Impaled on pikes. We had earlier. Oh, oh yeah. Boy. I told you we find them dead on the road, idiots. <laughs> um, the individuals that are um, on uh, in this like small camp, they appear to be wearing heavy furs and um, wielding kind of crude weaponry, um, and it looks like they are currently eating. Um, some sort of uh, massive feline creature. Like they've got one on this. Uh, uh, what is it spit? Spit. Yeah, that's my brain. Um, and uh, they're roasting it. Displacer beast. Um, from this distance, it looks like a feline. It could be a displacer beast. Okay. It could be a polar cat. Because we saw one of those with the red scarves fighting them farther the south. Back, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. If you want to avoid them, I'll need a group stealth check. If you want to engage with them, you can, of course, move up to their camp. If you want to try and walk past them without being seen, it's going to be hard to do without making stealth checks. So do you want to just kind of avoid this weird group of barbarian folk? Um, they do look like mountain folk. Um, or do you want to maneuver on them? Does everybody else fix I'm not confident in stealth. My armor's yeah, kind of loud. Same. I'm fucking confident, but I don't give a shit. You guys pick. As a group stealth, everybody rolls a stealth. If at least three of the five people make their stealth check, it's a success. Oh. Y'all, you, you want to try it? I mean, there's no there's no harm in trying, right? If we... If we try to sneak back and are discovered sneaking, then they will 
assume that we are trying to sneak on them. That's true. Benson, lay some of that moodest charm down. <laughs> I got my hands ready. Are they humanoid? <laughs> they are. Um, they're... A little tickle tickle. If you're focusing on them from this currently safe vantage point, you'll note that they are very fair skin and very fair hair, like blonde and white. Um, they are wearing um, dark uh, robes um, and cloaks um, fashioned out of uh, what appears to be bear skins. Uh, one of them is wearing what appears to be uh, Yeti skins. You remember the Yetis from the travel up the mountain. Um, and uh, the weapons they are wielding appear to be very crude. Um, but um, Benson, go ahead and make a uh, Arcana check. Seventeen. They're not made out of metal. Um, they're not made out of stone. They appear to be made out of some sort of crystal, and there's a certain kind of just power to them from this distance. But you've never seen this kind of um, material before. I oh, that makes me want it. It almost looks like the weapons that they are uh, wielding look like they're fashioned out of glass. Like a bluish colored glass. That would look super good with your robes. Like, yeah. like, think of obsidian, but transparent and slightly blue is the best way. Like, think of like, you know. You're making it worse. That kind that of would be better. fancy. It, it doesn't look very nice, is what I'm trying to say. Well, let's go give him a good old oh, yeah, this hello. Sure, let's do sure. that. Okay. So you are advancing on them to talk. Yeah. They all yeah. brandish yeah, their we'll, weapons. We'll wave as we. They all up. brandish their weapons. All twelve of them. Um, or I yeah. Say, Peace be with you. We are just travelers on the road. There, they start yelling no out arm. a very massive battle cry. Good afternoon. <laughs> how how close together are they? Pretty close. Do we know what they are now and what they're? screaming in or is it just roars they appear to be screaming in uh murder like they want to murder you wah <laughs> they, they are screaming in i wah. get it now i understand <laughs> benson fireball do you retreat That's what i'm thinking no okay um you cast fireball sure right, right. in the middle of them cool 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 so this is going to be pretty easy to uh handle um the second the fireball kind of moves into their lot and detonates you watch as all of them kind of like tuck into their cloaks and kind of Aah! it's not no longer screaming in anger more screaming in terror and the fireball detonates and it seems to hit all of them but none of them die okay so i just want to point something out here in this game i have cast three fireballs exactly and i want you to understand that three fireballs exactly have done no damage no 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 i'm it's, not mad it's but doing, i'm just like come on man you, you, you killed me you killed and, a bunch of Kruthix, okay? I, I will remind you. You were shambles. literally the one who saved the whole party yeah, from that wave of nonsense. Sad. But they do take damage. It just looks like they are hardy a hardy lot. You could have okay, rolled okay. you, you could have rolled maximum damage. You would not have killed a single one of them, is what I'm saying. That's real sad. What I I'm going to, one or two fireballs do it damage. <laughs> what I'm going to say though is is after they take the brunt of it, instead of like getting angry and rushing into fight, they all scatter northward and start running away. Do you want to try and rout them and chase them and fight them? No. Or just let them run? We tried to be nice. I say let them yeah, run. Let them go. They're fine. Yeah, yeah. There's no they, reason. they appear to be very scared of magic, is what I was trying to to note. And they also have 98 hit points apiece. <laughs> so... Oh, that's a lot. It's all <laughs> 1,200 hit points. Okay. That said, you see that their camp is left behind. If you want to go and toss it really quick. Yeah, I'll search it. Okay. You do find one axe that's been left behind, made out of the fancy blue metal or blue glass. Um, you do find that there are a number of daggers, swords, um, that look like they are fashioned out of cold iron. Um, they look like they are the same make uh, as the ones that you found in the Dwarven Redoubt that were being crafted by the Crimson Scarfs. Uh, you presume that these were being utilized by the Crimson Scarfs that are now kind of thrown up on pikes. You do not recognize any of the faces present here. That's good. I'd want that axe. Okay, I'll give it to you. I'll okay. start collecting scarves. <laughs> okay. Um, so, real quick, if you uh, kind of look at it for a time, you will note, um, uh, Chody, that it does have a magical property to it, but it's not a 
a worked enchantment. It seems to be kind of like a natural and en like enchanted nature of the material. That's fine. Can I break it down into residium? It sounded like Grok wanted it. Yeah, he said he okay, wanted that's it. fine then. If he wants it, yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, I could, Grok could use that, right? Battle axe, yeah. If you're proficient with martial weapons, absolutely. Then 100 give to him. Yeah. All it does as a weapon is it's treated as a uncommon magic item. Uh, it does not have any magical bonuses. It deals an additional 1d6 cold damage, but otherwise it is a battle axe. Sweet. Yeah, the material you're not familiar with, that will require some research. It's definitely something you've never seen before. Um, if you've played Skyrim, it's very similar to uh, Stalagrim or whatever, the ice metal that they have in that game. But yeah, cool, cool, cool. Traveling on. Um, continuing how many, down. How many scarves were there again? I'm sorry. Um, five. five. Okay. And you said there were. It says one one d six cold extra. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. Yep. Fifteen bodies only had five scarves between them. There were fifteen guys around, and among yeah. them were five of the. The dead, bodies. the dead scarves, there was only five of those dead guys. Okay, there were, I thought you said there were 15 people up on pikes and they were all scarves. 15, I'm sorry, I might have accidentally slipped that, but it's 15 berserkers, five dead dudes. Okay. I think Zach got it right, and I might have said it wrong. I Don't put that past me. Um, <laughs> that said, um, yeah, um, not too much else. Um, there is some meat. Um, obviously, that would be serviceable. If you want to skip your ration for the day and eat displacer beast meat, that's perfectly fine. If not, make sure you exhaust your ration as we get towards the end of the day. Um, I could find part food for some of the party. You could probably travel a little longer outside of Purple Light, but if you want to stop in Purple Light, um, you could. Um, it's entirely up to you. Uh, but you do have a couple more hexes worth of travel for the day if you're following the road. Downhill, again, is a lot easier than the uphill was. I'd say we just push through, get there as fast as possible. Okay. Anyone else? I can't think of a reason to stop. Okay. Other than winter coats if people need them. Just we're going to be going back up to the top of the mountain. It yeah. is so chilly up there. I mean, we, we have already coast. been... We've, we've, we, we've been in the mountains before, so we should presumably have some of that same gear. Right. I don't think we had much gear when we were in the mountains. Yeah, we, were all, we were all freezing to death on our sled ride down. I, I have a question. Yeah. Were there, and just curious here, were there only six of those guys instead of 12, and were they using Displacer Beast clothes? No, no, no. Clothes to, I was just curious here. Oh, no, no, no. Um, there were 15 Berserkers. Okay, I was just curious if that was what they were doing. I, I, I They weren't. Keep going. It's not yeah, important. No, there what were. Jody said it's way cooler, but it's not what happened. <laughs> that, oh. is, that is a cool idea. <laughs> um, cloaks Sorry, Josh. <laughs> cloaks of Displacement are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, if you continue on, um, you'd probably stop for sleep right about here. Um, and yeah, um, your watches are unimportant because you didn't roll anything bad uh, in the random encounter uh, nonsense. Um, you awake the next morning, continue on. Now, when you get to this section here, it's pretty close to where the road splits and you would have taken that game trail to where the Crimson Scarves were um, obliterated by Displacer Beasts. You see something kind of interesting here. Um, it looks like a number of militiamen um, from Bluegate, um, looking like they are uh, very similar to the Watch um, soldiers that you saw um, at uh, Bluegate Ford. Um, and it looks like a number of um, soldiers of a different um, sub-faction. Um, you think that they have very similar garb and stylings to um, uh, the, the, the minuscule number of uh, soldiers you saw at Purple Light. Um, but as you investigate them further, they appear to be um, martial um, uh, soldiers um, that were conglomerate remnant. Um, you can see that they each have kind of a conglomerate pendant around their neck um, and uh, weaponry. And based on the, the nature of this battlefield, if there were survivors, um, they perished um, recently uh or they they didn't make it too far away from here it looks like a very pitched battle uh between 30 or so um blue gate warriors and about 35 or so uh conglomerate warriors which is the count that you see kind of laying on the ground it looks like some try to crawl away from the battlefield but it looks like everybody who was probably engaged in it from the onset died horribly here um 
But yeah, a small battlefield just off the side of the road. Looks like a good camp. There are some flags that are kind of waving in the wind. Um, and yeah, lots of dead bodies. Um, you're pretty sure that if the, um, this has been here for a while, um, and its proximity to the displacer beasts in the south section, um, and the duration that they've been out here, it's strange that they haven't been pecked upon. Uh, should we take a look at the bodies a little closely? See... Yeah. Okay. If, why that might be... Like, if, you know, animals, anything, after the battle's gone, you'd think this place would be crawling with... Or there would be a lot less uh, representation of the bodies. It looks like everyone who's sure. here is here. Are, are we going to plan to take a camp near here, guys? thought we had just got done camping. Yeah, you did. We already did that. We can't oh, oh, right, uh, right, right. I remember now. This is this is early morning. It's getting late. <laughs> yeah, we traveled for a whole hour and a half. I was, I was gonna <laughs> say we should probably take take some time and at least properly stack up the blue gate ones. Well, and mark them. As you move over to the bodies, I'd like anybody who's intending to um, uh, just investigate the bodies to first off um, make either an investigation or a medicine check. Again, de depending on what you pick, depends on what the uh, answer you'll get. Nice. I'm gonna do. Uh, is it only two people, or can everybody? Anybody can do it. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. Right. Ten a lot. Twelve's on the board. <laughs> so Croc, yeah, we didn't do great. <laughs> Croc, you can tell that a couple of these individuals didn't die from lancing blows or strikes from a distance. You don't see any gore, and the sweeping blades that most folks were wielding on these battlefields don't appear to have the um, telltale signs of. Um, what they were doing. You can see that the others are kind of moving over towards them, and as you kind of look at the one that you're closest to, you kind of get a close look at the face and neck, and around the neck area behind the ear, you see a massive red pustule, which is very similar to the description that you recall of being um, a symptom of the Red Death. Oh, shit. So I would definitely say that to the others. What do you say aloud as they're moving? Again, it looks like they're moving... It sounded like Raya had a, a goal in mind, stack bodies, but they haven't gotten to it yet. I would say, stop. Uh, this is, you know, dangerous. It's it's a plague. That's fine. I'm going to pile up the bodies. I'll help him. I'm going to stay back. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you guys stand way over there. Okay, Paladin's well, fine. Paladin well, should be all right. Yeah, Zach and I, I are immune to these. Yeah. I am too. So, um, Raya, you pick up the first body, and yeah. um, it kind of in your hands, you watch as the chest section detonates. Like, bursts open. Um, I'd like for you to make a constitution saving throw. And I know you have an amulet that says you are immune to disease. That's great, but make your constitution saving throw. Do I mean? Successful. You manage to cover your mouth with your, you know, your shawl and back away. Um, you can kind of see the disgusting nature of this plague kind of burst out of the chest. And in thinking in hindsight, Benson, you are kind of sitting there thinking to yourself, and you kind of understand why Raya is, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be diseased, I'm fine. You know that the Red Death doesn't care about magical blocks to disease. If a creature can be diseased, it gets through any kind of blocks. Paladins fall to the Red Death. I would absolutely let them know that and say we need to let Tramples deal with this. Yeah, I got yeah, that. I'm back up. <laughs> I got enchanted by the goblin camp, too, that made me immune to Red Death specifically. Yeah. Yeah, but so, again, just saying. Yeah, if it's Red Death, I'm pretty confident. I'll cover my face okay. with a mask for the rest of it, but I, I want the blue mark, or the blue gate guys right, marked, yes, social leave some kind of marking behind. Fair enough. You would know <laughs> that yeah, the if their disease will burn the bodies. The primary means for it kind of entering into you, and again... Tracking back to the goblins. The goblins said residuals would be fine, but this appears to be direct. So it seems like it's they whatever. I was immune. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that was actually for a duration, and I think that duration's concluded. No. Yeah. They said like I'll, six years, maybe? <laughs> I'll backtrack, anyways. Yeah, go look it up. I will. There, was, there was not a time limit. It's, 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 not a, it's not a huge point of order. I do want to make sure that it, it's accurate, but regardless. between How many bodies total between the two sides of the battle? About 70. 65. 65 was the first math. Yeah. I feel like we should burn every single one of them. That's fine. 
Um, make an arcana check, Benson, at that suggestion. Spread like poison ivy. Sixteen. You, you put the red death in the air through the smoke, and if it still has its durational like potency, well, whoever breathes in the smoke or is downwind of this will catch the red death. And we bury them in the snow. No. Which way is the wind blowing? Freeze it out. I don't know. Wind's blowing southern. <laughs> Comes down from the mountains. Fucking light it. It'll hit Blue Gate if it travels oh, far enough. No. Yeah. What about burying it? Everybody's out here. I don't like it anyway. Um, I would have a problem have with a that. Family. I would have a yeah, huge would, problem yeah. with that too. I have a mega problem with that. I've so got family down there apparently. <laughs> my my <laughs> eyebrow would go up at Ryan and be like, oh, he's coming okay. back again. So the real plan: start making signs. We're gonna go out 100 meters or so in a circumference around this thing and mark it off. Okay. Just do not enter. This takes the better part of your morning. Uh, and uh, yeah, shortly thereafter, um, you kind of continue on, um, kind of a lot of work for some of you, um, as others kind of just more of a tense kind of, uh, if you're, if you've lived in Osiria for more than a year, uh, you know the stories of the Red Death, basically it's like the bubonic plague, just redder, a lot more blood um, ejecting out of people. If you survive the Red Death, which some people have, it's a very rare occurrence, uh, you're basically going to live immortally. Um, you will never die. The problem is, is that your body parts will wither away and fall off of you until you are nothing more than just your chest and head. And um, yeah, it's a very horrible and maddening um, ailment. Um, that said, uh, marking it off, moving along, um, up ahead, uh, down the road, um, you can see smoke kind of billowing just north of where you're located. Um, it looks like um, something is burning out that way. Um, and uh, you can go and investigate it or continue down the road. It's probably a good 300 feet away. It looks like a farmhouse. A farmhouse just has smoke coming out of it. There's a farmhouse and a barn. The farmhouse looks it's on, like it's on fire. If you pay attention and focus on it, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't look like smoke coming from the <laughs> chimney. It oh, those like are a whole house. No, those are different. At, at first, at, again, if you said, if you just said, yeah, whatever. But if you'd asked a question, it would have been more of a, I look at it. Is kind of what I was assuming. So yeah. Boy, that's a lot of smoke for a pig. <laughs> that looks like it's on fire. They the must fire. be cold. I'm gonna let Shambles take point on that one. He's the fastest, and I'll stay as close as I can. So you're going to go check it out. Shambles, so. as, you, as you approach, you see the door of the house kind of burst open. You see a um, uh, gnome, you think, uh, but you aren't really able to tell. A, sh a short, a little fellow um, kind of burst out of the door on fire, screaming in agony. Ah! Ah! And then he just falls to the ground and just stops moving. Oh, Jesus. The house then kind of buckles inwards as it kind of slams in. Um... On it. You're pretty sure if the group had come at, at group speed, they would have just saw a dead body on the ground and a broken house. You got to see the. <laughs> we still have time, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Better. Go medicine check. So. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll throw my robe over him, try to make sure he's not still ignited, and uh, see if I can't resuscitate the guy. Okay. Um, make a medicine check. There it is. Oh, did you, did you kill him? <laughs> I, I crushed, crushed his chest. Cavity, cavity. The, the screaming that was happening before, like as you kind of start to kind of flip him over, you hear it again. But the reason why it sounds strange this time is because as you're pulling him off of the stone um, pathway that he was running down, uh, you feel like his melted neck stuck to the stone. And as you kind of peel it back and away, his scream is now coming out of the hole you've just created on his throat and his mouth. And there's like this raspy kind of like rattling sound. Like you're pretty sure something in there is kind of like fused to his neck. And looking at it, there looked like there might have been an amulet that's kind of inside his neck instead of hanging off of his neck now. It's mm -hmm. disgusting. And he dies. He dies. He dies in your, he dies in your hands. <laughs> I was gonna say, put him, put him out. Brian, of we were already. too late. <laughs> oh, you did your best. <laughs> You'll never speak of this again. I'm gonna continue <laughs> just compression. 
You just I, you just look back. He was dead when I got here. <laughs> was dead I when think, I got here. I think you know what to do. He's very dead. Grab the amulet. Eat him back I, in the no, I, I grab him by the by the waist of oh, his there. And I pitch him back into the. <laughs> there are two steps here. If you throw the gnome back into the take, fire, you'll note that take the, the amulet off and then chuck him in. Yeah, the amulet doesn't appear to be of note, um, and it's also melted a bit on its edges. Uh, looking at it, it looks like it might have been I, identifying mark. A it, it, it might have been some kind of guild marker, but you're not sure. It doesn't have enough of its um, detail any, anymore. It looks like it was made of silver, so high heat very quickly. Yeah. What what time of day is it? It's um, Wait, close to noon. Close to noon. By this point. Okay. Uh, can I cast Detect Magic on the area to see if I can find anything? Yeah, um, so casting Detect Magic, you'll note that there's kind of a glow to the fire, like it was magically generated. Um, mm -hmm. You'll also note that there appear to be warding marks around the house at the entrances, and the barn seems to have kind of warding marks on its doors as well. Um, if you kind of move over to the barn to investigate it, or do you want to stay? Oh yeah, no, I'm going to investigate all I can. The warding marks seem to be activatable, and they currently seem to be off. And it seems that you can turn the symbols that are current, uh, currently like on the uh, the doors to kind of uh, create an effect. And the effect seems to be similar to a wall of force. So you can kind of switch them off or switch them on. So basically turn it on a force field is what it is. Correct. And it looks like they're currently off. Okay, so I'm going to let this know to the, to the group and say that this guy was... One, a magic user, and two, he seemed to be trying to protect something here. Or he was robbing the magic user. Do you open? Yeah. Either or, yes. Do you open the door to the barn, or do you want to? Yeah, I would check it out. If it's is it on fire? Do you want me to no, bar barn. Barn's a good uh, two hundred feet away from the the, the house, the farmhouse. Okay. The farmhouse blew up basically. Real quick. Yeah. Benson, do the runic marks around the house match the ones on the barn? They do. He said yes, they do. They okay. were both for the force. And you're field. sure it's Wall of Force, and it doesn't just burst this place into fire. From yeah. what it looks like, yeah. Wall of, Wall of Force is kind of like a conjuration magic, whereas uh, evocation would be required for a blow-up. But if, if you, Benson, move towards the door and open it inside, instead of seeing what you'd expect in a barn, um, you know, stables, hay, a bunch of bullshit, um, instead you see um, all sorts of very strange artifice. Um, not too dissimilar from what you saw inside the laboratory um, for the conglomerate high up on the mountain. Uh, there are pipes, hoses, um, machines that are currently switched off. Uh, there does seem to be one machine kind of running off in the corner with kind of a low humming sound. And uh, laying out in the middle of the barn, which is a pretty massive barn by the way, is a massive slab of wood that's basically panels of wood that have been kind of laid out. And laying on top of that is a very, very massive humanoid body standing somewhere around 18 to 20 feet high. Blue skin, white beard, bunch of hoses connected into him and appears to be not moving. Oh, that can't be good. I would bring the group. I would definitely wait for the group for this one. I'd say, hey, we found something over here we need to take a look at. All right, you all go in. As I described, there are several machines. There appears to be one that's currently humming, kind of like a, a low humming sound. And there is a massive frost giant body, completely naked, by the way, um, covered with hoses that appear to be connected to the low humming machine and other machines. But the... Is that alive? Yeah, does he look like he's breathing? No. But it does seem that there is fluid being extracted or pushed into him by the machine. Ryan, there's still time! Okay. <laughs> All right, I, I, Campbell, save him. I accidentally rip his throat off. Ah! I would like to go around and start investigating. Sure. So the machine, you'll note, uh, seems to be getting its power from a decanter of endless water. Uh, that The top has been pulled Ooh. off, kind of set to the side. It's sitting next to the uh, machine. And the water is being funneled into a pipe, which is causing a piston to spin. And it's basically utilizing uh, it to pull blood out of the giant. You can see that the blood is being pumped into a massive keg in the back, and near the keg there's a spigot on the side of that keg, like this pretty tall, you know, maybe eight foot tall, like, wooden keg, um, and uh, there's a spigot next to it that seems to 
deposit out onto a table. And sitting on the table are a number of different uh, empty bottles. Um, it looks like one has been filled up with the liquid, and you can kind of see the res uh, residual, residuum that has kind of been placed there. And you can see that a toenail has been put inside of the bottle that has liquid in it. It has not been stoppered. There is one sitting off to the side that has been stoppered. This is giant strength potion, right? It looks like whoever uh, was doing this was making very uh, potent versions of a potion of fresh giant strength. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, I remembered something. And there's one good. There's one that's good. Was, Typically, blood is not a requirement for a frost giant potion. Um, just the toenail or fingernail, um, which can be traded for pretty easily if you can find an agreeable um, giant. Because um, just like you and me, they shed those pretty easily. But it looks like this person has... Um, You're into the max. Yeah, is going for the gusto. Are there any kind of notes or papers around, like, who is who is he making this for? There are, there are surprisingly no notes. There are no written documents. It appears that whoever was doing this uh, was either doing it from memory or had all of their parchments and processes somewhere In else. In the house. <laughs> somewhere else. If you'd like to... Um, uh, Benson, you can make an arcana check to see if it does look like this one is pretty much finished. It looks like there might be something else that needs to be done, but you don't know what it is. But you've messed with potions before. Yeah, I definitely want to. Well, it's the um, worst that could happen, right, Shambles? Is there any. Uh, I, I want to try to. I don't know why I muted it. myself. I, I, have, I have no compare. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to roll. 26. Okay, so there's already one that's already been finished, and after about 20 minutes of kind of finagling around with this one, you seal it off, and you can feel that the contents inside within about 30 minutes will be potent enough to be consumed for its purpose. You have two potions of frost giant strength. Um, I Miller. would not eat those. Who Would Shambles be the best to have those, or does he use dexterity? Also, without arcana check, you know you can disable the machine and pull the decanter if you wanted. Absolutely. Okay. You pull it, or stop. would it be, would it be better for shambles or our paladin for the giant strength? Just stall them for when we need them for some random strength check. Don't keep them on Benson. I mean, yeah, yeah. No, that's not silly. after last time. <laughs> one, give one yeah. to uh, Brooklyn. Real yeah, quick. I'll give one to Brooklyn and one to Shambles. Well, would Andy be good with it? Well, I mean, what is a, what does it make your strength? I have twenty current strength is twenty. I have yeah. a twenty. I think it gives it twenty three. Okay, okay, well, let's give go. It, give Brooklyn. it to those two. It okay, just, just stow them. It's just going to come down to we need some weird strength check where we can't open a door and someone's going to drink one. That's all they're going to do. Well, I, gonna just, know. I just don't want to hold on to them because there's no reason for me to really hold on to them. So I am wanting to hand them out to people. Perfectly fair. You never know when a counter spell for knock will come to play. I will keep that decanter of water, though. Real quick, Brent and people who might be watching. A long time ago, um, there was a door inside of a conglomerate chamber which had a very keyed spell for defense against the spell knock. It wasn't that long ago. Keeping it locked. So he cast the spell knock without identifying what this charm on the door was. And the charm basically says, instead of opening this door, it opens all things that can be opened on the person who casts knock. Which means all of his ink vials, all his potions, his bag, everything just deposited out onto the ground. And he was like, ah. <laughs> Yep, that was a lot of really good stuff gone. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Was pretty great. It was horrible. And yeah, was... so go ahead and turn that machine off and let's go get some fire from the house and burn this bitch down and get out of here. Decanter of endless water, two potions yeah. of giant strength. Uh, I would like to take the decanter of endless water and take it over and try to use it to put out the fire on the house. Yeah, you spray it on the fire. Um, I would like to take the fire from the house and put it in the barn. It ha <laughs> that's an easy process. That's not hard at all. But the, uh, the water uh, idea, uh, this fire seems to be magically going, so the water doesn't so seem to help. be too much help. Magical um, water. The, it is magical water. It doesn't seem to be too much help. Um, and it does look like the main structure of the house already fell in when uh, Shambles had walked up on the house. After spending about 10 minutes in there and then the 20 minutes making the potion, in that time, the fire is now just a fire on the foundation literally burning everything that was there so if there's anything that would be salvageable it it's would, gone it would yeah it's 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 gone 
Unless it magically resists fire. No. <laughs> All those bird we, <laughs> we got a couple really good things from there, so I'd say we're we're good. All right. Um, okay. You um, gather up your things and you continue heading down. Uh, you make it to the section of the roads where it starts going kind of around the waterfalls, right? Um, now, if you remember, when you came out of Bluegate, you were kind of ascending and going up the waterfall bridges and pathways to kind of get up to the highlands and up towards Purpleite. Instead of uh, going down and towards Bluegate, you're going down and towards the opposite road. And as you're doing so, uh, you can see that the um, there's a river, a uh, streamway, that kind of comes near uh, where you're located. Um, kind of off the road a bit, uh, you can see down to the shoreline of uh, a bit of a lake and kind of an outlet to um, the uh, cloudy um, lake. Um, and it looks like there's a small fisher's like hut or hovel um, sitting just near kind of this like inlet, right? Um, and it looks like there are a couple of dead bodies outside with spears in them, um, kind of laying on the ground. Um, it looks like there was some sort of brawl or skirmish outside, um, but it doesn't look like anything's happened to the, the fishing uh, hovel. Uh, it just looks like there's two dead men outside of it with spears in them. For real, what the hell happened last week? Yeah, a lot of shit was happening uh, Apparently. <laughs> out in the world. But do you want to go invest? We, we take six now days off. Six do you want to days off in the world take one on. vacation. Do you want to go investigate the hovel or no? Yeah, I will. Okay. The uh, spears that are lancing these individuals look like they're kind of uh, very tribal, very um, uh, basic. When you kind of, if you pull them out to kind of investigate them further, you'll note that the barbs on the spears appear to be made out of um, like some sort of aquatic animals, uh, aquatic predators tooth. Not too dissimilar from a shark tooth, more like a barracuda's though, like a big barracuda's tooth. Um, and uh, there are a couple spears that have hit the walls as well. Um, it looks like there was some attempt to break open the door of the hovel, um, but it doesn't look like it was successful. And kind of looking around the house, there are windows that have been broken out, but they look like they're pretty small, narrow windows. Uh, it looks like, um, yeah, it looks like the, there was an attempt to enter into the, the place, and it wasn't successful. If you'd like, you can make a, either a survival check or an investigation check to more thoroughly investigate the, uh, the events that happen here. Again, different results based on what you choose. Survival or what? Yeah. Survival for Grok. Uh, we'll just go off that one. It's the easiest, um, and he rolled really good. Um, it looks like there were two other people. Um, besides the two dead men that are laying on the ground, two uh, booted individuals, and probably about 12 um, or 8, 8 to 12 um, individuals. Uh, you, you, Mishrael kind of says it was, it was nine, knowing exactly how many people were walking around with fish feet. Um, as you kind of explore, um, Grok, you would note that the feet that were traversing about here were Kuatoa, which are a subterranean race of fish folk um, fish-like creatures um, that um, are evil, uh, self-focused, uh, typically don't come up out of the um, the under uh, or the foul deep very often. But based on your proximity to the hamstring hills, they might have been forced out by something stronger than them, um, or they really had a bone to pick with these specific individuals. How uh, how tough does this door look? Um, pretty sturdy. Um, you can definitely give it a strength athletics check if you like, but it looks like it's just locked. Well, has anybody got, like, anybody good at lock picking? Oh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna give it a go? Sure. Don't right. be so modest, Ryan. <laughs> uh, do it with dexterity. Thieves tools. 19. Good enough. Lock is pretty simple, pretty crude Osirian lock. Um, click, click, and it pops open. Um, inside, it looks like there was probably some people living in here. Um, you can see that there are um, a total of five coat racks. It looks like two of them are empty. And it looks like three of them have heavy, kind of like rain slicker kind of coats um, and a cap. Uh, the cap seems to be a strange kind of shape. Um, if you're familiar with like um, 
seamen caps that would have been used like in the uh, by our navy, like the the white caps with kind of like the high brim and like the cap top. They kind of come up like this, like that. They look like that, but they're kind of a brownish color. Um, we're getting giggles and ha ha has in the chat. Seamen, um, <laughs> and the 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 slickers are um, kind of a uh, brown color as well. Um, they look like they're just kind of um, high um, water resistant uh, material. Um, raincoats. They're like raincoats, but they're not made out of plastic. Um, and then sitting on a table not too far from them, um, there appears to be a uh, an idol. Looks like it's carved of stone, you think? But looking at it closer, you realize it's actually a scrimshot out of bone. Um, the idol appears to be some sort of uh, weird squid-like creature. Some kind of deity, maybe? Do you want to cast Detect Magic, Benson? Yes. The caps glow. But the, uh, the the idol doesn't. I'll point it out, but I don't want to touch it. Do you go check out the caps? I'll pick up one of the caps. Okay. Yeah. Um. It, like I said, it looks like a seaman's cap. Put it on. You're gonna look great. Uh, you're right. Uh. Just look. You look just like a seaman. <laughs> Got your cap and your slickers. <laughs> Can you want to identify a hat? If you want, I'm gonna identify they all look identical. So you're pretty sure that if you identify one, you're identifying. Yeah, I'll all. Cast identify on it. Okay. Um. You would note that there is a command word written on the interior of the um, uh, the hats. Uh, seems on the name tag. To, yeah, it seems to be a very simple word. Um, it says um, "bubbly wubbly" as one word. Um, and after you identify it, you kind of get the joke. Um, it is a cap of water breathing. While you're wearing this cap underwater, you can speak its command word, bubbly wubbly, um, as an action to create a bubble of air around your head, which comes out of the cap's brim and around your neck. Um, it allows you to breathe normally underwater. This bubble stays with you until you speak the command word again. The cap is removed or you're no longer underwater. How many of them are there? Three. All right, I'll let everybody know. I got one on. Dibs, dibs, I want. I got one on. We don't need a hat. Zach, you don't <laughs> breathe. I do. But I want to wear one. <laughs> but I want to smoke underwater. <laughs> Fair. Do they require attunement? Um, I don't believe so. I don't think it does either. <laughs> yeah, so, no. yeah, shambles, knock yourself out, wear one. Just pass it over when somebody's dying. Someone actually requires <laughs> um... it. No, it's fine. Rock, I'll do it, I'll do it once I'll get forward. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Rock could hold his breath for an hour, so maybe the other three who are not shambles and Grok should have them. Yeah. That's fair. I can walk on top of water. I think like a rock. If no one's stopping me, I'm going to fiddle with the little... Uh... It, it appears... Well, if, as long as you're wearing a hat while you do it, I'm go for it. I'm focused on the hat. It appears to be an idol of some sort made out of bone. Looks like it's been scrimshot out of bone. Um, it appears to be, um, as you look at it more closely, um, it appears to be a bust, actually, not a like full creature. And it appears that it's the neck and head of a creature with six tentacles where um, like the jaw would be, um, and kind of a, a, a weird kind of um, coned head. Face. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, and Benson, when you kind of take a look, your first thought is Mind Flare, Illithid. But it has six tentacles on its face, which you're not sure what that means, but Illithids have four, not six. This seems to be something squidier than a Mind Flare. <laughs> More squid. <laughs> yep. Fair. Um, okay. But yeah, if that's all you've got there, and you're. I'll take it with me. Yeah. <laughs> plan Good is luck, to leave that location and continue on. Finding totems went great for us last time. You are taking it with you? We burned my last totem, so what this? Hell yeah. Okay. Perfect. Take it. Perfectly fine. Um, when you lift it up and look at the bottom, it does look like it has markings on the bottom of it. It's in a language, but you're not sure what it is. Does anybody here speak deep speech? Yo. You have that ring. <laughs> if you speak deep speech... 
um, and you see it, it seems to be a name, um, possibly the name of the individual who's represented on it. And I'm going to... Um, uh, <laughs> how, how deep does it have to be? How many times do I have to do this, dude? <laughs> what? Do what? House Rose Stone. <laughs> no, 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 no. This one I have. It's just. Oh, uh, okay. It's just um, I wrote it, and I don't know how I'm gonna say it. <laughs> well, the Gabriel. Well, the Gabriel. Well, the Gabriel, like that. That's the name that That's... appears to be written. I okay. say it out loud. Well, the Gabriel. You say it three I say it too. Well, to Gabriel. Did somebody say it a third time? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing happens, but... Oh! If there was a, like, if there was oh, a mirror no. present, you guys would be boned. Oh, scary. Have, right there in the back corner. Whoa. I have a mirror. My shield's kind of shiny. <laughs> oh, yeah. If Benson were at a better polish. Um, <laughs> at this point... Um, one, two, three, four, five. It's getting pretty late in the day. You think you probably go one more hex, or you could try and stay here. I, mean, I don't feel comfortable staying here. We're indoors. People were attacked. If you're continuing on the road and you want to camp out, that's perfectly fine. Um. Okay. Um. Do 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 do. And I'm the more. Well, okay. All right. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and write that comment on the bottom of it for you. It doesn't seem like anything happens during your second night's uh, downtime. Um, five. I think I've miscounted. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. You've actually should have camped three times already. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this will. You could have gone two more. This would have been your third time camping down. So I've actually miscounted. I don't know where I slipped up, but yeah, basically you're ahead by three, and I'm dumb. But so, this is your third night sleeping. Nothing happens on it. Nothing would have happened on your second either. And the time scales would have been pushed up two hours from when you found everything you found so far. No big deal. Um, that said, um, you wake for the fourth day of travels. You are in the shadow of the Hamstring Hills, um, and uh, you continue on. And I'm pretty sure. This one's a wash too. Yep. This one is a wash. You make it through the day with little to no uh, problems. And uh, it is getting very cold though, uh, temperate wise, as you're getting closer to Mount Ruby Eye. It seems like the temperature in this specific area is a bit more um, uh, dense. And uh, Grok, you would understand why. Uh, basically, the winds that come down from the Ice Fang. Um, and then the winds that come down from the ruby eye kind of meet in the middle. Um, so like this middle ground is being blocked um, from it continuing further south by the hamstring. So it kind of creates this little area where the cold winds kind of linger. Um, but yeah, um, that said, camping. Um, I need to know if you are camping with winter clothing or if you do not have winter clothing. Very important. Where my coat? Pretty sure uh, Benson's the only one with winter clothing because Grok said we don't need it. I didn't. S Wait. Is it? Is it I getting we cold, it. John? It is. is it to the point to where it's going to like I to Benson to where it feels like it would be uncomfortable for everyone. Well, the main thing I'm going to ask is is if you're camping in your normal uh, ideas, like you're not really doing much with a fire, right? You haven't. In okay, the past. I'm going to make this easy. I'm going to cast Lehman's Tiny Hut, and we're going to sleep good. Perfect. Very good My choice. Hero. You've huh? had that this whole time. I actually you just got son it. Of a bitch. I, no, I actually just got it the last time I leveled. So. Oh yeah, and what about the other three times we just camped outside, Jody? We were well, safe. We've been fine. I was it was kind of a quick thing, so oh, yes, I have a tiny hut. Okay. We're just, yes, thank we're you. just five dudes thank out you, it. No problem. <laughs> Being pals. Okay. Be appreciative. We were rubbing it. <laughs> So um, when you sleep and the hut's sitting out where it's at, um, as you're kind of resting, um, you're taking watches or no? Didn't need to with the hut. Okay. Yeah, we're still on watches. Two of us don't really sleep. All right. Well, then I would like everyone to, if you're all sleeping just straight away, go ahead and everyone make a perception check with disadvantage 
shambles make yours with um normal because you're not really and uh sorry uh raya same um yours is normal everyone else's is uh i'm sleeping well whack I am out, 28 bro. all right um 25 was the target so you're good with that 28 uh just north of you probably maybe 500 or so feet um you can see a massive shadow in the sky um the uh Stars tonight are very bright. Uh, you know, when it gets colder, like, you know, uh, the celestial bodies kind of pop a bit more through the frost of the sky. Um, and you can see the shadow of it kind of beneath the, uh, you know, sheets of stars above you. This massive figure appears to be white um, and winged and pretty nasty looking. Um, and it seems to be kind of flying in your general direction. Shambles fists are gone. <laughs> Punch it in the neck, Jeff. He feels it. Has a feeling coming out in his knuckles. My hut is white, so well, I'm gonna go out. ahead and wake everybody else up and point out this dragon. Okay. Everybody, you awaken. Um, it does seem to be kind of fluttering in your direction. It doesn't seem to be moving at at speed. Uh, Grok says to Benson. Do you, th do you think that, that it can magically detect this, the hut? I mean, it's a dragon. If, if it can see us, the hut is is semi uh, permeable to where they can see it. But um, I would, if, I, if I'm if i able, John, I would change the color to turn it white to try to blend in with the area around us. Okay. If that does anything. Yeah, it's mostly just cold. It's not snowing this far south. But, yeah. It's, oh, never mind. It's, it's fine. Well, then I would turn it whatever color it is around us. Kind of a deep, deep green. That's perfectly fine. Yep. Hey, Benson, did Dragon Snow detect magic? I would think I did. Out of character, John, do they know it or no? Dragons either so. can cast spells or they can't, and um, you know that white dragons kind of lean towards the more brutish, kind of um, uh, less magical oh. kind. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Losers. <laughs> they are. Do I recognize this shape? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's it Shambles' siren call. <laughs> His fish just start magically raising themselves. They're ooh. start putting together that that big uh, body there. Well, that's gonna take an hour. <laughs> Plus assembly time. Yep. Is it? Is it? It's not coming towards us. It's not like. It's, it's, kind of, it's, kind of, it's kind of for us. It looks like it's gonna fly over. It kind of, it's kind of idly flying in your direction. It would basically be like the slow walking uh, variety of uh, f flying. It's not rushing you. It's just kind of. Or does it look like it's flying in a way that it's circling, looking for food, or is it flying with intent? Pretty much dead on, just straight at you. Okay. Or over us. Yeah, we should probably just get ready, just in case. Yeah. Say the word. I'm outside this door. <laughs> okay. Start, start clicking what, those heels. Do we know what kind of energy uh, a white dragon uses? Is it is it cold or is it lightning? Cold. It, cold. Okay. Weird question. <laughs> he, he's the one that killed the dwarf uh, up the mountain. New. Frozen to death one. He is the one that killed the dwarf up the mountain. Yeah. That is accurate. But, um, yeah, as you kind of sit there for 20 or so minutes, those of you who can get tired are getting tired. It doesn't seem to be uh, getting any closer. It just seems to be kind of lingering at this kind of 500-foot distance. Um, like that charging scene from uh, Monty Python. Yeah, yeah, it is genuinely like that. It, every time it, you guys stop and look at each other, it's like normal. And then you turn back and it's like... Dun, 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 dun. It's farther away again. And then it's in the Lehman's tiny hut and it's... <laughs> ah! And you close the door. Oh, well, it doesn't have doors. It's it's literally a bubble. <laughs> we seal it in there. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be getting closer. So we should probably, because I know I'm feeling pretty exhausted already. Just kind of, whoever can stay up the longest takes so, the first so one. You're starting to trail off, starting to pass out. And I'm uh, staring out the window at this thing. The dragon kind of dips down and reveals its kind of like full like uh, silhouette. And you realize that it is a lot closer than you had expected, maybe a hundred feet out, based on its 
positioning up in the sky. You think it was basically able to kind of keep its distance kind of obscured. It's a pretty similar hunting trick to um, like frogs do this kind of thing where they kind of maneuver in and slowly like wander towards something to kind of trick them into thinking it's farther away than it is. It dips down, kind of flies over the lot of you, maybe passing 60 feet above you all. Um, to do anything, you have to exit the hut to be able to cast out of it. The second that Benson exits the hut, the hut disappears. And is the hut indestructible? It is, and so long as he, yeah, is in it. Here, I'll put this in the... it doesn't you have a door that closes. There you go. You can actually read the actual text mm-hmm. if you want to. But it does protect us some. So it's passing over you about 60 feet above you, and it appears to be flying southerly towards the half... or towards the, um... Uh, the, those hills that I named one time. Hamstring. Hamstring, that's right. I want to pick a fight. I want your input, and I want you to sell me on not fighting. <laughs> oh no, I want you to fight that dragon. <laughs> His uppins have come. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> who, who is this? The right. Place to do it? Or is, is, would it, would it, it oh, I don't think there's a right place for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the fight with the dragon has a correct spot. Okay, okay. Top of him. That I sounds mean, like the worst spot. I need something to throw him off of. <laughs> well, I mean, all right. We'll really you, you've had your chances in the hut. Then so you're throwing him right. off of Benson. It's. Do you feel that? The um, stopping Kalareth is more important than this revenge right now. You'll be putting your you'll be putting your revenge in front of a lot of people's safety. Of course, we will be saving some people by taking care of the dragon, but it's still a chance. Wise words. I got two four or two against and one four. Brooklyn, thoughts? Look, I'm gonna be straight honest with you. If you fight this right now, a lot of us are gonna be not very helpful because a lot of us are still tired and you won't have full force and I'm, I'm going to be honest I don't think we can take on a dragon not fully ready hold on a second I gotta get my cats you guys keep talking but at that point it would be kind of like a now that he's really gone to your and die, or... Bad little I could totally turn you into a red dragon if you can fight him so, so I don't want to be a red dragon I want to kick his ass okay well that <laughs> would be <laughs> You go robot man. There's a cat. Baby boy. How invincible are we inside of this box? You cannot be touched while you are inside of it unless it has right. some way of dispelling the magic. It is a third level spell, so a dispel magic cast at its base level would drop the Liam and Tiny Hut in a second. But He's not a ma- most white dragons aren't magic users, so. But base also fro- also base white them. dragons that are not wearing amulets around their neck are not magic users. Which, if you recall correctly, uh, Hornbeck, also known as Freemus, wears a strange blue pendant around his neck. When you got thrown off as a scarecrow, you remember him wearing such. I guess I do. <laughs> I showed you a picture of him. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I, I'm very forgetful, John. <laughs> it's okay. No worries. Let me see if I can find... Over the dome and ice and lock us in here. Also a possibility. He could effectively just sit there for the next five hours making a mountain of ice on top Sounds of it. Sounds like it's three against and one four. It, again, there's a lot of things that could go wrong here. You're out in the open. All it has to do is fly and grab somebody that doesn't fly, fly straight up and drop them, um, and that person's done. <laughs> like, <laughs> unless it's me or or uh, uh, shambles, he flies. If it's I Brooklyn, he's fly. literally I'm done. Dead, <laughs> I'm ped. That's a that's a good game um, for that one. Um, so yeah, it's it's entirely up to you. I mean, it. I'm, Fine. Fine, go back to bed. I'm gonna stare at it. <laughs> Alright, so what you what you will witness is the dragon does seem to notice that you are there. Um, doesn't seem to Feels take my rage. Doesn't seem to take too much of an interest in it. 
um, and then flies further on into the hamstring hills, um, basically just bypassing you entirely. But you have an idea of where it's headed. Um, I would like for the smarter of you lot to go ahead and make a just, yeah, intelligence check. On it. Well, 15. Uh, I like how everybody rolls. <laughs> Right, based on a trajectory and where you presume you are in space um, and reality, it's heading for the temple where Calareth is said to have been. I'm clicking on for like 20 minutes now. Yeah, I've been watching you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, if you sleep um, continuously and with no effort or no issue, um, uh, you do awake the next morning. Um, and continue on. Um, into the town of Barad. Uh, you arrive there close to mid-afternoon, uh, based on your current trajectory. Uh, when you see it up ahead, kind of on a high point on the road, because the road kind of comes up onto the hamstring at that part right there, and then kind of descends down into the That's small the weather little... in Barad. Um, cold. Cold as heck. It's yeah. um, frosty, um, but there's no snow. It's kind of like you can see the the little specks of snow kind of forming in the air around you, and your breath is definitely showing. Um, that reminds me, in this day worth of traveling, if you are not wearing a winter cloak, I need you to make a constitution saving throw. If you're wearing heavy... Um, I did uh, bad. If you're wearing a winter cloak, you're fine. If you're wearing heavy armor or the, the like, specifically heavy armor, uh, you have advantage for the roll, but yeah. Um, shambles. You can feel yourself kind of, your joints kind of locking and kind of becoming more um, uh, tightly wound. Um, you are not in, um, you're in skirmisher mode, right? You don't have the bonus to exhaustion? Okay. All right, so you are exhausted. Uh, Mishrael, you are exhausted. It is very cold and it's very wearing on the bones and the body. Um, everyone else seems to be okay. Would be out though. You do make it to Barad. You're just tired when you arrive. Uh, we should scatter around here a little bit and start looking for the winter coats on all the people that got killed already. Like, yeah. oh, so, sorry, before I was interrupted uh, by myself, uh, <laughs> when you got to the, uh, that high point on the hill above Barad looking down at it, you can see that there is very little left of um, uh, what you assume it looked like in its prime. There are a lot of broken buildings... Um, there's a lot of uh, areas that look like um, they're basically just carns of ice. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's a lot of um, just dead bodies kind of laying out in the snow, not fully rotting away because of the cold temperature here. But, yeah, as, as you enter into the town, um, you don't find much in the way of anything, really. It looks like anything of worth or substance has been taken from this place. You're looking into the buildings. It looks like they've all been tossed, turned over. Um, if you'd like to kind of search for usable resources, you can make an investigation check. Um, if you're just kind of keeping an eye out um, for anything worth noting, make a perception check. And if you are trying to kind of get an idea as to what might have happened here, you can make a survival check. You can only do one of the three, and depending on what you roll, is what you get. So, uh, Mishrael, you're able to find a really nice blanket, um, like, in one of the houses that wasn't taken. Looks like it was just kind of thrown aside as someone tossed a bed to kind of, like, see what was in it. But the blanket itself, you're pretty sure, could be very quickly turned into, especially if you have someone who's handy like Benson, uh, into a winter cloak. And it's not bad looking. Like, you'll kind of, out of character, you might look a little bit like a kid who takes a blanket and ties it around his neck to look like a superhero. <laughs> But it's definitely heavy enough, this, this cloak, or this, this uh, blanket, to serve as a winter uh, outfit. Those ones called the blankets with the sleeves. Oh, a Snuggie. Like, that's what I'm doing with this bad boy. Put All right. on back. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm on board. Yeah, if you want to just make, like, a kind of a poncho, too, that also works. I thought poncho would be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Snuggie, I guess, is that's what's you in style. I'll do both. I don't know. Hold the middle two arm holes in the front. That way it doesn't fall off. Live your best life. <laughs> um, okay. Um, and then 
everyone else you're kind of just passively like looking around it doesn't really seem like much is going on um in the way of uh, it, it's cold though um it's a lot colder than you were expecting it to be and you can see that a lot of the uh, buildings have been kind of frosted over um similar to the temple when the temple was frozen shut to you um like something big massive breathed ice on it and froze it out Really the dragon is very active here. It was. You remember that it came down here with a lot of folks to rip this place oh, apart. someone could stop him. <laughs> you had your chance. Twice. <laughs> if, 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 if Benson's facial expression is going to be angry. <laughs> he just kind of looks at you with robot face. <laughs> I'm trying to grimace. He said Benson again. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. It wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shambles. I was like, Benson can be mad. He was mad at the farmer. Oh, oh he, he did. He did it wrong again. You guys were bad. It's buddy cop movie. I'm sorry. And Shambles. We are. It's great. <laughs> but yeah, there are some establishments that would serve as a suitable like place to rest. You think you could probably get one more hex of travel, but that would put you at the base of the mountain. Um, but yeah, there doesn't look like there's much in the way of any kind of work goods here. Um, you see kind of broken, uh, farm tools, but it looks like anything that would have been, you know, usable as a bladed object has been taken. So you might see like a broken pitchfork, but you're not going to see like a, you know, um, like a scythe or something. Those are gone. I'd say probably safe to find a spot that looks livable and stay the night just to be safe break at least okay um you do so um and uh yeah um my if it's for the night i'll cast hut again my timing was poor on this one and i apologize yeah, it looks like i'm gonna have to stall for 30 minutes <laughs> i tried you guys but we might we might have to just you thought you set the hook with the dragon <laughs> Yeah, we might just have to do this. Um, I guess we got as close as my movement speed. Dragon oh. finds us. Hold on a second. All right, so as you kind of start setting up for sleep, I'm assuming there is a watch cycle here, right? Yeah. Okay. I need to know what that watch cycle is, so take your time figuring that out. Wink, nudge, hint, hint. <laughs> um, so Standard. I have a question. Did we get That's rest last night? <laughs> Yeah, did you get rest last night? Yes. Yeah, you slept in the year. Okay, so just being straight here, I will cast Lehman's Tiny Hut because I think we're sleeping again. You can cast so Lehman's Tiny Hut down. as a ritual. Okay, I'll do that then. Sorry. <laughs> That'll be easier. Just, just want to make sure I pro tip you. It takes 11 minutes to cast Lehman's Tiny Hut. So much better than... Yeah, okay, cool. It, I was like, I keep using a third level spell for it this. Takes, it takes one minute to cast it normally. It takes 11 minutes to cast it full, I think. Let me double check. I heard it takes for Brooklyn to take his armor off. Yeah, by you're like right. a lot. <laughs> Liam and Sunny Hut is... A ritual. Third level. Um, lasts for eight hours. It takes uh, one minute to cast, which means it costs... Or it takes t 11 minutes to cast as a ritual. Cool. Then that's what I, I will do. Well, if we're going to be... Here in this spot for a little while, I might. If it's okay, I know you already had us do our rolls for these kind of things. I would want to look around to see what kind of tracks might be left. I know it's been sure, sure, at um, least two weeks. Get an idea of what kind of forces took this city. If you're spending some time in the evening to kind of check in on that, I, I, I'd say you can go ahead and make a survival check. Um, I know you have goggles of night and you're not going to be too obscured in the site but keeping in mind the the frost that has kind of been, uh, been piled here um, I'm going to be taking your lower of the two rolls well bummer it's a seven. Oh, okay I didn't see what your rolls were until I just said that um okay yeah um not much more than um, Dragon's been. <laughs> not much more than um, was stated before um searching around the town it's a pretty simple structure. It's uh, kind of a round town with a well in the center. Uh, the well looks like it was been, it, it's been frozen. Um, it's like filled with ice. Um, it looks like the um, main buildings that were frosted over um, were what was more than likely the Curios' establishment, um, and what looks like it might have been like a barracks. 
uh, were the two things that looked like they were primarily hit. Kind of keying this in, you assume that it knew where to strike when it did. And it looked like the meager amounts of defenders that were able to kind of muster after the initial breath attacks um, were fought on the northern side of the town um, by a pretty massive host of creatures with all different types of footprints. You're not really able to tell how many or um, of what variety they were. Some appear to have had four legs. Some appear to have had, um, you know, been Can slithering. Yeah, so definitely very strange. Um, but yeah, um, in the middle of the night, uh, during the second watch, so whoever is on your second watch, your middle watch. I'll do. But given what I know about white dragons when we stopped in the Blue Gate Library, Somebody's doing the thinking for this thing, if it knew how to take this down. They're not terribly smart, yeah. They, they're typically not terribly smart unless they're very I've old. I've been saying that for weeks. <laughs> yeah, unless they're very old. Um, and this one, based on what you saw, is an adult at best. This is adorable, but very annoying. Uh, <laughs> one cat is in a tote, and the other cat is just fighting the cat in the tote. Um, let's see. So what might happen now? Um, so as you're kind of meandering back, having checked the north side of the town, back to where you're staying, uh, you do see that easterly of the town, kind of moving out over the half-cut hills and kind of coming out your way. Um, very visible in the night sky. Uh, because, again, it's clear out here. It's cold. You've got that, you know, uh, the stars that are shining above you. You can see the spiral clearly, you know, glancing across the entirety of the sky. For those who aren't familiar, um, <laughs> in my campaign setting, um, what uh, you see in the night sky every night um, is a massive band of uh, black kind of straight across the top of you, known as the rift or the Dargian rift. And then on the, you know, both sides of that are just clusters, masses of bright stars and then further out from them, closer to the horizon, smaller amounts of stars. Um, it's believed by Arcanist, and Benson would be familiar with this, that the uh, creation of all things comes from the Dargian Rift, and everything spills out from the unending spiral where it sits, um, where the center of it sits. You're kind of looking at it sidelong. Um, not too dissimilar from our real life um, situation just darker in the middle um but yeah uh you would see backlit by the stars the silhouette of a dragon coming down from the ha or the hamstring uh, descending towards barod probably another or probably about a thousand or so feet out when you first see it okay for realsies no for realsies <laughs> kick this guy's ass <laughs> So, um, what do you do? I get my pitchfork ready. <laughs> How many watches have you been doing? Is it three or four? I don't know. You said you had a regular. Oh, I'm going to rouse the others if I've spotted it. I Sorry. Say, I really like <laughs> My bad. No, this is a 1v1. Shambles <laughs> of the dragon alone. Hey, man. That is kind of how I imagined it. <laughs> I am down for whatever you would like to do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, as you move um, in that direction, you can see that it's flying with a bit of purpose um, and kind of heading in your direction um, a bit faster than it did the night before. Um, you make it back to the, uh, the place where you're staying because you were on the north side of town checking around, looking around. Mm -hmm. while they were setting up and getting ready for sleeps. You make it to um, the, the hut, um, rise awake. Presumably everyone else is asleep and so this was your kind of watch. Um, and you start rousing them. By the point that you kind of turn in and kind of enter into the house that the hut was cast in, you can see that the dragon has already cleared 500 feet and is basically halfway to getting upon you. And it looks like he's purposely flying towards Barrett. Correct. Hey, go type. Wake up. Oh, someone's daddy's mad at us. 
All right. The white dragon can't think for itself. Somebody told him to come kill us. Shambles, oh. as you kind of, like, go time, and then do you rush back out to see what's going on, or do you... I get outside, and I get on what remains of the rooftop of this place. Perception check. There we go. 25. To the north of the town, you can see that there are hundreds of lights that have lit up on the, um, the mountain's foothills. Like, there's a massive force there that is also coming to life. Um, and it looks like the lights continue to just blink on. Torch lights, you presume. So he's coming from the south, and I see many, many lights to the north of the city. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, current map. From the east. Lights from the north. Dragons don't use torches. Mm. So, as you can see, uh, you are currently in Barad. The lights are coming from here. Okay. The dragon is coming from here. Pinterest in. I don't know. That could be an ally to the north. He could be flying towards the torchlights. Hey, I would think he'd be going towards him to hurt it, or it could be his minions. Remember, he had minions? Many minions. I didn't see any last time, so. The dragon came last time, though, wouldn't they? So. So they. Well, the, the, the lights are close enough that. Um, you are starting to see silhouettes as well. You can see that there are humanoid figures. Some of them appear to be bipedal. Some of them appear to be quadrupedal. Um, there are some that seem to kind of slither. There are some that are kind of flying down and kind of landing next to others. Um, they appear to be looking in the town's direction and you're kind of looking out at them, wondering if they're looking towards you or more so towards the dragon. About how far out are, is that force? Um, Once again, I'm sorry. That force is probably about 1,200 feet away from you, and that's uphill, so they'll be coming downhill. It'll be pretty fast if they're rushing down. I my pipe out of my satchel and light it. <laughs> Wonder aloud why we couldn't handle this last night. Do you Stop wait? Stop on the roof and say, are you ready? Do, do you and some... Me. Do you inside, what are you planning to do? Hide in the hut or come out and about? Do you still have the means to cast teleportation circle or not? Me, no. It was tore out as you and used as a scroll last time. didn't know if we had a second one or not. No, sir. Okay. So, uh, Shambles, you're watching. Do you do anything or are you just kind of watching to see what happens? to see where he's going. The dragon flies yeah. out over top of you. It, as you're looking up at it and kind of getting ready to just jump up and punch it like, you know, Mario style. Hadouken! We're looking for the ultimate short you <laughs> It doesn't seem to even care about you. Like, it's passing over an ant. Like, it doesn't even concern itself with you. And then it flies itself to the north portion of the town, throws its wings out to its side and kind of stops itself mid-flight and starts to kind of hover there, pushing its wings down hovering about 500 feet above the town's north side. As you watch it take its position, you hear it speak in the dragon's tongue, and it does so in such a loud voice, you're pretty certain that it's being magnified by some sort of magic. Would we hear it in the hut? Everyone hears okay. the voice. I speak draconic as well, I was saying. It says, for those who speak draconic, uh, for those who don't speak draconic, it's like just guttural, deep, draconic talk but those of you who do speak it you hear the dragon say he has commanded up the mountain we go destroy the servants of the bird peck every feather from it and return them to him who wishes them go forth and you hear loud cries up from the mountain oh. and as you're watching shambles if you don't speak draconic it sounds like oh Fuck. <laughs> like, this is good. I good. do speak draconic. Then you are perfectly like, oh, good. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been you, hilarious because it would have been like. in here speak draconic? That's another like, This sounds yeah. like some death metal I shit. Think I used to. <laughs> You're going to want to translate. I'm going to relay that to them. That's what the scream was. 
Um, you then watch as the forces with the torches start moving up a path near where they appear to have been camping, um, heading up the mountain. Um, and then you watch the dragon kind of spin its right wing and turn downwards and kind of come down and land on the mass of ice that was the Curios' house. I'm going to stop okay. on the roof again. <laughs> you so guys are going to want to spread out. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like he's sending the force against Tazeel and then he's staying to fuck with us. Make an insight check, Shambles. Good at that one. Psych. Advantage because of hatred for dragons. Okay. What did you get? <laughs> 26. Hatred for this dragon. It's, 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 uh... It's not that he's stopping here to guard it or anything. He's tuckered out. He just flew really fast for a whole day to get here. Um, and last night. So, yeah, your presumption is is that um, he's tired and waiting here because of that. Um, he also mm. might be waiting here because he might be anticipating whatever he saw last night arriving here. There could be a two-fold story here. So, out of character here, uh, you guys probably want the uh, element of surprise. What with this golden ripe opportunity? Is there an element of surprise at this point? Hell yeah, there I is. Mean, I mean, he stopped to, he stopped to rest. <laughs> yep, I like uh, that idea. Okay, I mean, if he's probably exhausted, <laughs> we might have a chance. How far is the Curious Tower from where we are? Curious House is probably about 500 or so feet. Um, if we move to it, we'll be moving to its own kind of grid map, which I am still trying to find. <laughs> <laughs> the curious is igloo. Don't you judge me. But... Trying to find the cat typing furiously gif. Try and find. <laughs> I think I found it. I've got my uh, pitchfork out. I'm going to... Is he, is he like, facing our direction? Um, he seems to be facing easterly. Um, you're kind of coming at him from like a southeasterly position. So, um, yes, but not really. Perfect. Like, uh, if, if he catches you in his peripherals, yeah, but. I'm gonna motion to the others. We should find a good position. And I'm going to step off the roof and float as sneakily as possible, clockwise around to get broadside him. Okay. Let me take a second to find the map. That's probably a super important part. I will be stealthing as close to him as I can. <laughs> I'm just above rooftops. My cat. I got two cats. There's one right there. Usually I have the black. Uh, mittens is oh, um, black. No, this is. I've got three cats. Okay. Um, there's Shiro. Okay, you just said you have two cats. <laughs> I, I currently have two cats on my desk. You have you have two cats on your person. <laughs> I, I yes. There's one elsewhere. Your cat assets are liquid, I guess. <laughs> this one especially. This this little guy is um, wiggly. Um, he is a. I'm pretty sure I could pour him in a cup. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, let's see. Again, I'm sorry. I genuinely. Did not anticipate this glorious bot. I think this is it. Yep. Okay. Cool. cool. Go time. Um. All right. The main thing that is not noted on this map, and again, apologies, um, is that the uh, house is not covered in ice. On the map. It in the be. game it is. Correct. And can spiders climb on ice? You'll still have to make an acrobatics check. It's still slippy. Can the Mandalorian. Also, the map is upside down. Yeah, it's still the world map. No, I'm trying. I'm trying to move to it. Can you try harder? 
Damn, dude. And Vincent just got killed by a block of ice. Ah, oh, crap! Uh, <laughs> and Shambles is in skirmisher mode. I think that's everybody. Does everybody have sight? Yes. Okay, so the house in question is the one that's kind of featured there. You can see it on the southern part. These other things that are blocking your sight are other buildings. Because um, you are on ground level. Uh, but yeah, this building here. Um, which is kind of blocked from sight. Um, I will remove its sight blockingness. I think. I think that's fair. If it will let me, I will do the thing I said. There we go. And I will put a dragon on there. Um, so yeah. Hopefully that comes in on the right side. He's just passed out on top of it, you said? No, no, no. He's kind of sitting on top of it. He's not passed out. Oh. Yeah. Catch his breath. There he is. I meant gauntlets, not an amulet. Wrong dragon. Lied so, to us. I did lie to you. I knew he had magic items on. I just. It's not cool, man. But yeah, um, yeah, he just kind of hanging out. But yeah, spread click through Anything? a crack in the room, spread out, get into position. <laughs> We're gonna get this guy. <laughs> Are we yeah. able to, to do things before, but if it is no, we're here? Um, he, he doesn't appear to be noticing you, but if you want to, um, I know some of you had said, I want to move around back, I want to catch him from the side. He's facing, south is actually north. This map's upside down, like I said. Um, facing but, up this direction. Oh, he's facing us. He's facing straight up. You guys are kind of south to okay. the side. Yeah, I want to move ahead of the party a little bit and stealth my way through town. Try to get as close to him as I can. Make a stealth check. Fifteen. And I'd be circling between these buildings over here. If yeah. I think they... The second you kind of move into the alleyways, you don't seem to make any sounds, but everyone else watches as the dragon's head goes in your direction. And you can see the dragon's feet and hands kind of move towards the other side of the building as it kind of moves across its current perch to try and angle itself so it can see a bit better. So it's moving this way. Do you keep moving or do you stop? Do I see the dragon move? No. You hear it, though. It's definitely not something that um, is very quiet. Okay, then I'll freeze up here. Make another stealth check. 15. You're not sure if it knows you're there. Everyone else is watching it as it just remains laser focused on the building you're hiding behind. Well, I can see them, so I'm pretty sure it knows I'm here. Like... <laughs> everyone else, everyone else, if you are attempting to move from your current position and you're trying to do so stealthily, you're doing so at disadvantage. Because I'm looking right that way. Alright, hey. so I definitely ain't doing it with disadvantage. Well, regardless, I've got to split us up a little bit. So I'm going for stealth, and I'm going to head, I guess now it's east. 11. Yep. Its attention changes. You see it kind of rise up on its back legs, and then in Draconic say, Come out. I know you're coming. Remember me? I do not. Should I? You're in a different body than last time. I <laughs> try. It's not really a fair question. Fair question. I'm I'm emphasizing up W. <laughs> he seems to be quite a rudite in his reply to you, also in his uh, battle cry towards the others. 
already knows we're here. Let's kill Fire. it. Yeah, move up. Uh. <clears throat> Sorry, the mountaintop. There was a scarecrow. Ah. Uh, you played with it like a dog. And I will do likewise with your new frame. <laughs> he raises his hands, and you can see his black claws kind of start glistening blue with ice. Roll initiative. I thought it was me. I was like, how? <laughs> Dead lab. Everybody on? Now, I, I know we have seven minutes, so we're probably only going to be able to get through like one round of this fight, unless you're Zach, all you're not on there. down to keep going. But obviously that would make for a oh, better I session. Oh, I didn't the token. Okay. <laughs> Next session. A full if, session. If you want If you want to call it here... I, I, Before the fight starts. I don't mind a first round. Okay. Yeah. However you want to do it. I think we can get through uh, one I got to reroll my initiative and fix it. Sorry. No worries. Let me know when you're done. Good. Okay. This is not going to be a good fight for me. I don't that one. All right. So, Raya, you're first. You are not hidden. And bonus action dash. Okay. And it's, um, the, the building it's on is, uh, 30 feet high. Okay. And made out of ice. I'm just gonna get within range and ready in action to throw a knife, or, like, you can't take two bonus actions, right? Correct. You can take an action to take one of the bonus actions, though. What are you trying to yeah, bonus action? Then I, the cantrip, but then I'd lose the ready to action. Oh. Or the... Everything else. Um, yeah. Can I take back the bonus action dash? Yeah. Okay, I'll use the bonus action to cast the cantrip. I will move to here, normal. And I will ready an action that as soon as Shambles moves adjacent, I will cast the spell. Well, you're going to bonus action cast a spell and then action throw the, the knife, right? Ready to action, yeah, to throw it, yeah. Okay. Grok. 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 Uh, Grok is going to uh, what is that? I think I'm within 60 feet, right? Sounds right. Oh wow, you rolled a one on your initiative? Yeah. That's why I said I'm not having a good fight already. Nah, you're right where you you, you gotta run where you want him. Hey. I'm gonna intimidate him, I promise. You fairy fire on it? Okay. Dexterity saving throw? Yeah. DC fifteen. Got a nineteen? Okay. Alright. Bonus right. action. Rage. You sure? Uh, is that right? No. No, I'm not yeah. sure. To I'm keep, not going to do it because I can't yeah. attack. To keep a rage, you want to fight. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Shambles. I'm moving in. Alright. I was floating among rooftops. I yeah. was 50 feet away. I'm guessing the angle's not terribly enough to. I'm going to get just laterals. Just a little sure. Bit. Uh, Jeremy had a ready to action? Yeah. 22 to hit. Hits. Fifteen sneak, ten piercing, and six poison. It's uh ten psychic, and the sneak is also psychic. The spell turns it all yeah. to psychic. Cool. Does he still take the poison damage from the venom dagger then? Yeah. Okay, so there's stack, I'm just thank you for So we're looking at uh, 25, uh, 25, 31. I gotta make my con saving throw versus the poison success. Yeah. So I don't take the poison on... Okay, so just 25. Do I take half though? 
No, I don't. No. It's safe for a uh, block at all. Okay, for so all then it, yeah. we're looking at 25 damage. Cool, cool, cool. And he is slowed by 10 feet. Um, That's from the, the ghost knife. The ghost knife part, yeah. Got it. All right. Um, Chody. No, I, would, I had the rest of my... Oh, shambles. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was letting him do it so we wouldn't forget him, but now. Well, I could have said Benson, and then you would have been like, oh, oh that's me. Know. I go. Yeah. <laughs> he just got I it wrong. <laughs> no matter what, it was wrong. <laughs> go with it. Oh, I am stabbing this fuck with a pitchfork. <laughs> uh, Flurry of Blows is only an arm 26 to hit. For 11 piercing. Okay. And I'm gonna do a couple of flag just spinning kicks with a flurry of blows. 16 and 15. 16 and 15. Uh, neither, neither, neither of those hits. I didn't think they would. You actually see as they're coming in this kind of blue glow about him that seems to kind of block the kicks. With some kind of magic armor. Or like some kind of That's bracers of armor. Um, okay, so before your turn ends, or after your turn ends, and before Benson starts, I am going to tail attack you for a legendary, I think. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm going to wing okay. attack. All right, so I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. 18. Fail. You watch as his wings come up. Well, shit. <laughs> and he kind of lifts over top of you, and he pushes down with his wings. The force of the wind gust throws you down to the ground. Um, you fall 30 feet and hit the ground. Um, you're only taking the damage from the throw, though, from the push, which is 13 bludgeoning. Um, and you are knocked prone. Um, it then lifts up off of the, um, the thing because of the push. Um, well away from you being able to make an opportunity to attack, and it kind of flies about, um, it would be 10 less, so it would fly 15, I think? Twice? Um, it would be 15. Yeah, it's, fly speed is 40, so it would be reduced by 10 and then halved. So 15. It kind of up off of it, so it's about... Diagonal up 10 and out 15. Um, and then on its initiative, I need everyone within 120 feet of it, which I think is everyone, uh, to go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. Is Vincent within the... God damn it! Thing? 10 feet. What? Oh, yeah, this is between... This is... It, oh, sorry, hold on. Nope. I'm cheating. I'm cheating. I'm cheating. We'll keep oh, those... Stop cheating. We'll, we'll keep no, the... It's all trash. We'll keep the... I, I apologize. We will keep... <laughs> We'll keep those. Throw away. We can throw them away if you want. I think Jody wants to keep the rolls that you just made. Benson's so brave. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Benson. I skipped your turn, Jody. Please go ahead and take your turn. It's 15 feet out from the house and 10 feet well, off. Well, I'm going to throw a fireball at it. Okay. Go ahead and uh, roll your fireball. 26. Okay, and it's a dexterity saving throw. He fails. Oh. Finally! He doesn't appear to be vulnerable to it, um, but he does take the full brunt of the fireball. Normal, not double. Still pretty good. In reply to that, as a free action, in Draconic, he says to you, How many more of these do you have, little one? Do you speak Draconic? I have a ring that I can understand him. Fair enough. I just flip them off. <laughs> One more, <laughs> <Man. Damn> right? <laughs> I act like I'm, I act like I'm doing a, uh, a, a spell, and then I come up with that. He is going to. Oh, I forgot one in my pocket. <laughs> He's going to use his, um, his action to do the thing that I said. So everybody has rolled their wisdom saving throws already, right? Uh, yeah. Everybody. It looks like Brooklyn just rolled his. Yeah, <laughs> yep. So, um, shambles, um, and um, Benson are fine. Everyone else is frightened. Um, of Shambles path Grok passed. Uh, Shambles and Grok rolled the same thing. Shambles. Oh, that's an... Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. I was reading your dexterity saving throw at the top. Sorry. 
Yeah, no, just Chody. So Grok, Grok and Shambles and Chody are good. Just Chody. Everyone else, you are frightened of the dragon for one minute. Uh, you can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns, ending the effect as a if you succeed. Um, if you succeed on a save against this uh, fear once, uh, you no longer have to do it for 24 hours. Um, he will then descend. Um, he will utilize a bonus action to move fast. Um, and he will draw down right next to Benson. Um, I will then um, end my turn, and before Rookland takes his turn, I will use a legendary action to tail attack on um, Benson. Um, Come on, ones. 28 to hit. Ah, you missed. 21 bludgeoning damage. So it kind of slams down, spins around, and the tail kind of smashes into you. Um, Mage armor. <laughs> it actually hits with a dirt coat. <laughs> yeah, could I use a shield? Does a twenty-eight get blocked by shield? <laughs> I mean, it's a special one. It's my hand one. So, uh, ma uh, make <laughs> for for flavor and flavor alone. Go ahead and make a Constitution saving throw. Uh, roll a d8. One. Okay. You get launched 15 feet straight back from the tail blow and kind of back into the corner of that house and kind of, oh, and then kind of turn it over here. Straight back. After, I No, straight back. That is straight back. Uh, That's straight up. That was, right. I went yeah, this is. way yeah. straight back because well, I was here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Put yourself 15 against. Feet won't, 15 feet won't hit the house. He just falls 5, 10, 15. It's like right near it. You're not, I'm just saying for flavor, you bounce against the back of the house and then kind of move into that position. It hit you with such okay. force. It kind of pushed you away. Um, cool. And then as it kind of turns its attention to you and kind of grins, everyone else is kind of like, oh! Um, speaking of, you said oh! 21, right? Yeah, 21 bludgeoning. Um, Got it. Cool. So yeah, um, last but not least, uh, Brooklyn, you are up. Okay, uh, first thing I'm going to do is bonus action shield of faith myself. Okay. Do I just click on it and it gives me the plus two? or do I just it's, add it? It, it's, I, I notated it. And then... I can't really do anything because I'm frightened of it. Yeah, you can't move towards me. You can attack it though, right? Can't move. Can't move. Okay, so ranged attack then. Yeah. Not a thing he does. <laughs> yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> uh, I guess after I do that, uh, I, I really don't have anything else. Okay. If you end your turn, um, then you would go straight to the end of your turn. Go ahead and make a saving throw against the fear effect. Literally never. You are insanely afraid of it. Okay. You, do you want to use your inspiration from uh, your hilarious joke earlier? Oh, yeah. How do I use that? Okay. You save against the fear. You are no longer frightened. So, Yay! because of a stupid pun earlier in the Discord, uh, Rooklyn will be able to join the fight next Sunday. Um, we're going to go ahead and end the session here. We went a little over. Um, but, yeah, we'll pick up next Sunday uh, with um, the Brawl and Barod. <laughs> yes. Thanks for watching. Killing the stream.